Hi everybody. This video is a remake of one that I made in the beginning of this channel. Um, it's a bit longer because I'm adding more step-by-step -step instruction, uh, more close-up video shots of the actual work that I'm doing, and hopefully a little more explanation. I think you're going to like it. Um, I will show you as I go along things that you should or should not do. Um, because I'm going to use a yellow chalk on here and I would recommend you not using yellow chalk because the kind that I use doesn't wash out very well. The white does, but the white doesn't show up on video very well. And when you start, make sure you have a nice sharp seam ripper. Mine is dulling, so it looks like I'm going to have to buy more. I get these by um, five or six or even 10 at a time because they're really cheap where I get them. And I will leave a link in the description box where you can get them. That, that, the link I, believe in, I will be leaving is not an affiliate link. Others may be. I get my products from wawak.com. I really like them. I use them a lot. Um, but I also include links on Amazon because some people prefer to use Amazon. Some people prefer not to use Amazon. So I will include both. You can also order from these people on Amazon. Um, but again, if you um, don't want to use Amazon, I'll leave the other links. Okay, so I came up on the pleat right here. It's been a long time since I've done this. So the steps, the, the initial steps kind of slipped past me. Here's a pleat right here. And it's recommended that you put a pin in here so that um, you can keep the pleat when you shorten the sleeve. So before it, before it opened up, I wanted to pin it. Okay, before you go any further, just take note of how much um, seam allowance is here. And that is a half inch. So just be mindful of that because you're going to tuck that, that amount back into your, your cuff. So the next thing we need to do is remove the placket. Okay. If you don't want to remo remove the placket, this is the point where you will cut off what you need. So if you need to take off a half an inch, you're going to mark it and cut it off here. If you, and then, and if it's only half an inch, it's not that big of a deal because the proportions are still pretty good right here. But if you want to take off an inch, inch and a half, you're gonna, your cuff's gonna come up here and then your button's right next to it. So that's why when I was taught to do this, um, if it's anything over a half an inch, we just take the, the placket off and then move it up. So I'm going to remove a half an inch, but I'm going to remove the placket so I can show you how it's done. This, this looks like it might be a one piece placket, maybe, maybe not. We'll see when we get into it. So let's take off this button first. Okay, so when we sew it back on, we're going to be able to see where the button goes. So all the time that we're taking these things off, just be mindful of the stitching line. And that'll help get us get everything back um, on properly. Okay, these are two pieces. So this is going to be the large piece of the placket, the upper placket. This is the smaller piece of the placket or the lower piece. So when I refer to upper or lower, that's what I'm talking about, not upper and lower. Okay, you can see right here that 
the buttonhole um, caught the shirt in here. So what we're going to do is just trim around it. This will all be tucked into the placket so you won't see that there's a hole there. I just get it as close as I can to the buttonhole. Okay, this is a smaller part of the placket. And if you look on the underside, you can see it has like a finished edge. And that's because after you sew it on to the shirt, you have this little piece that sticks up here. And I'll show you how that's made when I get finished or when I get to that part. Um, you pinch this up and you sew it down so that on the inside it has a finished look. So now we're going to remove this part of the placket. If it's hard to get out, just keep flipping it over and working different sides until you find um, the place where it's just gonna allow you to finally remove these stitches. Okay, so that's what that one looks like. Now, before we go any further, uh, remember that it's gonna be easy for you to see because this area is cut out, but I wanted to remind you to be sure to take note of how this goes back on. This, um, if you have to look at the stitching areas, this area up here, it looks different than this area. So the, what I look for is this area right here has a stitch and it goes this way and this way. And I know that goes down towards the cuff and this double stitching here goes towards the top. So we are going to cut off a half an inch. So I'm going to move my pins up. Now what I'm going to do, because you can see this is at an angle, when I move the pins, I'm going to move this over just a little bit, just to make sure that um, it's going to fit back in the um, cuff. And hopefully I won't have to make any adjustments to that, but we'll see. So I'm going to go from the edge and I'm going to measure up a half an inch and it's going to look like just a little bit from here um, because I mean the stitches are right there next to it, but we're always measuring from the edge. Again, don't use yellow if you have a white shirt and you plan on wearing it because um, this doesn't really uh, dissolve very well and you'll always see it underneath. Oops, that, I don't know if I measured that correctly. I did. I love these little six inch rulers for alterations like this. like scissors you can use scissors but also you could just lay your um, ruler down and just cut it off with a rotary cutter if that's what you prefer now because we took off and ha a half inch here we're going to go up this way and we're going to we're going to measure up five and a half inches right there now you see there's a, a triangular piece right here and when we get up here we're going to have to angle off Sorry guys, double checking, triple checking.
we're going to go off this way. Okay, what I'm going to do is go to the ironing board. I'm just going to press this out really nice because it looks wrinkled and I think it would just work better if I just pressed it again. Okay, I didn't open it. I just pressed it out flat. So now I'm going to align the, the raw edges at the bottom and I'm going to slide in enough material to match where it was before. So make sure that you can see the stitching line here. It aligns with the stitching line on the shirt placket, or I mean the shirt sleeve. These have to be opened up a little bit more. What I'm doing is trying to make it enough where I can slide the fabric into the placket here and then be able to flip this triangular piece up and then stitch it. Okay, now I'm going to get the machine here and get this sewn up. Okay, before we get started on sewing, I want you to check to make sure, um, look how far your pins are from the edge, flip it over and make sure it's the same on the back. That way, um, hopefully you'll only have to pass through this one time and not have to remove the placket and start over. I'm doing a straight stitch at 2.5 and don't forget to back stitch. stitch again. Now this looks curved. That's because it was curved to begin with. I tried pressing it out but it just wants to go back and I don't know if maybe the placket when it was cut if it was not cut on grain and so it's just stretching. So I'm not really sure but it's back in and then now I'm going to take this triangular piece here I'm going to align it like this and then sew that and that will all get encased in the top part of the placket or the large Okay, so the raw edges are here and the underside is finished. So now we're going to put the large placket piece back on. Okay, this is 
the large placket piece. And when you put it on, just be mindful of how it wants to fold because um, if you fold it back just the right way, it's going to give you a better result than if you try correcting anything. Now, because I had to move it, this area is going to get in the way of the buttonhole. So I'm just going to trim that back because I don't want there to be any added bulk underneath. Okay. Now, everything gets tucked under right here up to where it splits off. You see this is already tucked up. This all gets tucked inside. Try to make sure that the top placket lies flat. Again, these are kind of curved, so that's just the way it looked when I took the cuff off. So I'm going to reach in, grab all the layers, and then try to secure that placket peak so that it doesn't shift when I'm sewing around it. And then the last pin is going to go sideways. And again, that's just so it doesn't shift. I'll remove it when I get to that point. Now, the ladies I worked with, they got to the point where they could just sew all this and not have to pin anything. Um, you know, if, it, if you feel better pinning everything, then go ahead and pin it. I'm sure over time and doing this enough that you can just put it on without worrying about it but when I first started doing this I had to pin every little thing because this would get twisted and if you're working with a plaid or a print like a stripe or something you it stands out so with a white shirt it probably wouldn't but um yeah that's how to deal with that okay this is the area where people have told me they wish they could see how I went up and over or around that large placket hopefully I can give you a better view of that this time around. Don't forget to backstitch. You can see oh, with my left hand, I'm trying to hold this point down so it doesn't shift. Okay, press your foot up and pivot with your needle down. Try not to be pulling on anything at this point. it again at this point just try to make sure everything is lying as flat as you can get the, you can get it without really pulling on anything pivot again now here you're going to make sure that these areas the plackets are lying on top of each other See how everything is lying flat. And then 
gonna pull this out just a little bit so I can grab hold of it when I get closer. And I also pinned that there because when you're sewing at this angle, you can't always see where those previous stitching holes are. <laughs> so I used the pin to mark it for me. Needle down, press your foot up, and pivot one last time. Make sure that on the left-hand side, the plackets are lying together neatly and flat. Okay, that's what it looks like once I've got the placket back on. And let me see what it looks like underneath. Looks good underneath. Now we're going to put the cuff back on. Now remember that um, we're going to keep note of how much fabric needs to be tucked back in. And if you want, you can actually mark it with the chalk. So we just tuck this back under here. Now, when you do it this way, um, I do the right sleeve first because if I need to adjust the pleats, um, I can do that when I get to the end here. Now, I tried to bring them in a little bit, but it doesn't mean I always get it right. So if I do the right sleeve first, then I can tell how much I need to bring it in that way, when I do the left sleeve, I can already know how to adjust those, those pleats. I'll show you what I mean. That was a tough pin. Okay, so I've got these, these um, pinned in, but you see right here, there's still a lot of room. So... I'm going to take this out and I'm just going to make that pleat a little bigger. Now, um, the way I was taught was that if there was one pleat, you only make, you leave it, when you put it back, you make one pleat. But, um, and if there was two, then you make sure there's two. I don't know how much of a difference it makes. I guess it would depend on your customer or what you prefer. I'm assuming it would be a preference thing. I don't know for sure. This area right here was not going in straight. It was an angle, so I'm just trying to fix it. Okay, that looks right. Don't forget to back stitch. Okay, now I'm going to sew the button back on. And for this, I'm going to use um, my waxed 
hand sewing thread. Um, if you guys, this is real convenient because you don't have to worry about waxing it yourself. The wax makes your thread, it gives it more body, it gives it more strength, and it makes it just easier to work with. So instead of um, waxing my own, this is just already pre-waxed, so it's really nice and convenient. So to make sure you're going to put your button in the correct place. Now you see the button hole here where it was to begin with. Um, I just like to do this just to make sure that it's going to look right. Because sometimes things do shift around. Take your chalk. Line up your placket. Now because they bow like this, I'm going to have to move them out just a little bit. And then I take the corner of my chalk and go in between the buttonhole inside. And then it marks it. Now, because it's right along the same, I'll probably just put it back where it was. I just wanted to make sure that it was going to fall into the same area that it was supposed to. I'm doubling my thread so I don't have to take as many pass-throughs. Some people, in fact, a couple of the ladies, they would make their threads uh, fold it into fourths and so they would only go through it once or twice, but I don't do that. I feel like there is a little extra added security to have it pass through more than just once or twice. Now we just run the needle through all the threads a couple of times and then tie it in a knot and I'm finished. Okay, that's it. And once you get it finished, you can go ahead and take it to the ironing board and give it a good press. And then you'll want to press these creases out. And that's it. If you guys like this video, give it a thumbs up. Uh, if you haven't subscribed yet, go ahead and consider subscribing. And I'll see you in the next video. Thanks.